Hi, and welcome to another dose of virtual vitamin Z. My name is Stephen, and I'm the curator of humane education for the Detroit Zoological Society. And today I'd like to start off by asking you all a question. And that question is, what's your favorite thing about fall or autumn? Now, as you think about your answer, and feel free to add your answers in the comments section, I want to share some of the answers from my colleagues. Now, Brad said it was the crisp autumn air. Claire said it was trees changing colors. Danae said sweaters. Sandy said bonfires. Zara said apple orchard donuts. And Debbie said, I don't like fall. Now, I hope that by the end of this lesson, Debbie, and maybe some of you others who don't particularly like fall, might have a change of heart. And I will say that my favorite thing about fall is all of these things. It's my favorite season. And I think it's also a great time for us to go outside and build our connection with our local environment and also learn a little bit more about the environment and then take actions to help the environment. So to help you get a better sense of that, I want to share another version of our trivia game. It used to be called Trivia Thursday. Now, since on a Monday, I'm just calling it Trivia Game. And the title of this game is Fun Fall Facts or Amazing Autumn Accuracies. Now you might be wondering why two titles? And I will explain that in a moment. But to get started, let's recap from last game. So last game, the two teams were exotic wildlife. The DZS celebrates and saves exotic wildlife. And local wildlife, the DZS also celebrates and saves local wildlife. And the prize was that depending on which team won, my next Facebook Live that wasn't a trivia game would focus on the communication system of an exotic animal who lives in the Detroit Zoo or a local animal who lives in the Detroit area. And here were the scores. As you can see, the exotic wildlife team did a great job, average score of 6.5. The local wildlife team did a little bit better though, an average score of 7.5. So my next Facebook Live topic will be the communication system of the Eastern Gray Squirrel. I will share everything there is to know about squirrel communication and hopefully you will be amazed by it all. But let's go back to today's topic. Today's topic is fun fall facts or amazing autumn accuracies. Now, why two titles? Well, it's because this season is the season so nice they named it twice, that's right. Fall and autumn are both terms that refer to the same season. And if you take a look at these charts, you can see that in American English, fall is a more common term than autumn, but they are both fairly common. And then in British English, fall is considerably less common. Now there's a fascinating history behind this, but I want to move on to the actual game. That said, if you're interested in learning more about that history, go ahead and check out this link, which does a good job of explaining it. So this week's teams, as you may have already guessed, are Team Fall and then Team Autumn. So think about which of these teams do I want to represent? Because this week's prize is that depending on which team wins, I will start calling Fall or Autumn by that name for the rest of the season. And I'll also try to convince other people to do so as well, even though both of them are accurate terms. So as a reminder, or for those of you who are new, to explain the game structure, there are four rounds. Each round has two questions. In round one, that question is worth one point. Round two, they're worth two points. Round three, three points. And then in round four, there is one question on which you can wager between zero and three points. And if you get it right, you get all those points. If you get it wrong, you lose all those points. And the rules are, first of all, please, please, please do not post answers in the comments. The reason for that is that we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to participate, even people who might not be playing live, who might be watching a recording. Also, please keep track of your own score. And then at the end of the game, share your team, Team Fall or Team Autumn and score in the comments. And at the end of the week, after a full week, the team with the highest average score will win. 
So round one, and these photographs you'll see are all photographs from the Detroit Zoo showing some of the amazing things you'll see this fall, like this tree changing colors. So be sure to come out and visit so you can see that and also be sure to observe your own local neighborhood for some amazing fall colors. So question number one, the seasons are caused by changes in Earth's distance from the sun. Is that true or is that false? Moving on to question number two. Squirrels pretend to hide food to fake out potential thieves. For example, other squirrels. Is that true or is that false? All right, moving on to round two. In round two, the questions are worth two points each. Here's a photo from a garden at the Detroit Zoo. You can see the leaves starting to turn red. Speaking of leaves starting to turn red, Question number three, which of the following pigments gives some fall or autumn leaves a red color? Is it chlorophyll? Is it carotenoids? Is it flavonoids? Or is it anthocyanins? Question number four, how do squirrels locate the food they have, been, they have buried during the fall or autumn? Is it through an excellent memory, a strong sense of smell, a strong sense of sight, or just luck? All right, moving on to round three. Here is a photograph of a tree by Buster in Trio's habitat at the zoo. These questions are a little bit harder. We're three points each. On the fall or autumnal equinox, Approximately how long are the day and night? And this is just a fill in the blank. And the answer can be a number. And if your number is within 30 minutes of the correct answer, then you'll get credit. And question number six, approximately how far do monarch butterflies travel during their fall or autumn migration? And in this case, it's also a number. And if your number is between 500 miles of the actual number, you'll get credit. So if it's within 500 miles above or below. All right, moving on to round four. Now here's another really amazing photograph of some leaves changing color. Question number seven, other than disposing of them by like burning them or just throwing them in bags and throwing them away, list three different things you can do with fallen leaves. And again, this is the question where you can wager between zero and three points. So if you feel really strongly, I'd encourage you to wager up to three points and you'll get those points if you get it right. All right, it's time for the answers. So round one, remember these are worth one point each if you get them right. The seasons are not caused by changes in Earth's distance from the sun. They're actually caused by the fact that the Earth is tilted on its axis. And so at different times of the year, some parts of the planet get more or less sunlight. Question number two. Squirrels do pretend to hide food to fake out potential thieves. In fact, I read a study that suggested that up to 20% of the time, if you see a squirrel burying food, they might not be burying food at all. They might just be faking you out. Or if they are burying food, they might then dig it up and move it. They're very cautious as well as very intelligent and observant when it comes to preparing for the winter. All right, round two, these questions are worth two points each. So you got two points for each correct answer. Question number three, which of the following pigments gives some fall or autumn leaves a, a red color? The answer is anthocyanins. Now this is interesting because the yellow and orange colors we might see are caused by two other pigments, carotenoids and flavonoids. And those are always in the leaves. It's just that the chlorophyll, which gives leaves a green color, kind of out overshadows them. But as plants stop producing chlorophyll, 
those yellows and oranges start to emerge. Now that's different with the anthocyanins because plants will actually start producing those in the fall and that's what gives them that red color. So it's pretty interesting. And if you take a look at a leaf, you can kind of see how the chlorophyll travels through the leaf by what colors are revealed at what time. All right, question number four. Squirrels locate the food they have buried during the fall and autumn through both an excellent memory and a strong sense of smell. So you get credit for either of those, and that's two points again. Now their memory allows them to remember where they store food in clusters. And so they might know, okay, in this area, one piece of food is over here, another piece of food is over there. They also have a strong sense of smell and combined those two, combined those two things to find food. All right, round three, three points each. On the fall or autumnal equinox, the day and the night are about 12 hours long each. And if you look at the word equinox, you can see in the first half of that word equa, equal, and then nox, night, equal night, which means equal day, 12 hours each over 24 hours. Question number six, approximately how far can monarch butterflies travel? Up to 3,000 miles, so pretty incredible. And for this one, if you guessed anywhere between 2,500 and 3,500, you'll get credit. And on the last one, I should have said that if you guessed anywhere between 11 and a half and 12 and a half for one or the other, you would get credit. And finally, round four. Now this one, there's really no right or wrong answer, but here are a few things that you can do. You can use them in compost. They make for great compost or a great ingredient in compost. You can create nature art with them. That's always a lot of fun. You can use them in gardens. They make a great mulch as well as provide nutrients to a garden, to the soil. And then finally, you can do, or not finally, but you can do science experiments with them. There are a lot of really cool things you can do, especially with looking at those different pigments in them. And then finally, of course, you can make leaf piles and either hide in them or jump in them. So if you got any of these or anything else other than burning them, which we should never do, or just throwing them away, which is a waste of a good resource, then that counts. All right, and that leads me to our activity in action, and that is to repurpose fallen leaves. So by doing this, we'll increase our sense of reverence and responsibility, increase our knowledge about our local environment, strengthen our empathy and environmental literacy, and help animals in the environment. And the supplies we'll need are really just fallen leaves. If you want a lake or some bags or other, a rake or some other bags or other containers, you can use those as well though. And the instructions are first, spend some time outside. Fall is awesome. There's a lot of amazing things to see and experience in the fall. So don't feel like just because it's getting a little bit colder out that you have to automatically start spending all of your time inside. And then when you're outside, find some fallen leaves on the ground and gather those leaves into a pile. And once you have that pile of leaves, there are a lot of different things you can do. One of them is you can repurpose them into compost. Another is repurpose them into nature art. And then as we saw, there are a lot of other ways. And feel free, by the way, to add other things you can do with leaves in the comment section. So if you'd like to try one of those methods out, but don't quite know how to, here are a couple of resources. This one is from MSU Extension and it lists some different steps you can take to use leaves as compost, as well as why that's an important thing to do, both in terms of what it can provide for your garden, as well as how it helps conserve this resource. Another resource is to create nature art with leaves. And there are a lot of different things you can do with leaves. I do enjoy this website because I think that it does a good job of showing some photographs of different ideas. For example, you can make a leaf pinwheel, leaf butterflies, and more. So feel free to check out that resource as well. So that's all I have for today. Before I go though, I do want to connect this back to the work we do at the Detroit Zoological Society, and in particular, our Berman Academy for Humane Education, where we have the mission of helping people help animals. Now, one way that we can help people help animals is by building our senses of reverence for the environment. 
So I hope to have accomplished that by encouraging you to spend time experiencing your local environment this fall. We also help people help animals by strengthening their sense of responsibility. And I hope that by giving you some ideas for how you can repurpose leaves in a sustainable way, that you're able to feel that sense of responsibility and also feel like you have the ability to do things to help the environment in that way. If you're interested in more activities and lessons around the fall, be sure to continue checking out our virtual vitamin Z lessons because we'll be adding more and more that are focused on this season as the season progresses. You can also visit past vitamin Z lessons by going to our website. Until then, stay safe and have a great day. Bye.